Alrighty, good afternoon everybody. My name is Brett Williams. I am the climate focal point here at the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Austin, San Antonio. And this is the South Central Texas 2018 Fall Climate Outlook Webinar. We will go ahead and get started. Before we get into the fall season, let's go ahead and do a brief review of what happened in summer. We had above normal temperatures across the entire region this summer. Most areas were below normal for precipitation. And here on the bottom left, you can see the four official climate sites across the region and where they ranked in terms of uh, warmest and driest, or in Del Rio's case, wettest. And you can see that both San Antonio and Austin Camp Mabry, which is the official climate site for the city of Austin, recorded their third warmest summers on record. And you can see in general it was dry across the region. Uh, with the lone exception being the Del Rio area and portions out west across the um, Edwards Plateau area. And then drought persisted with almost all of South Central Texas either abnormally dry or in drought by the end of the summer. And the bottom right here you can see this image here. This is the U.S. drought monitor for our region here uh, that was released on Thursday, August 30th, so at the end of the month of August, so the end of the summer. And you can see that almost the entire region is either in D0 which is abnormally dry or in drought, uh, varying from D1 um, all the way up to D4. We had a little small region here, D4, uh, on the Rio Grande. So you can see that uh, the drought was a pretty big deal for us this summer um, with the heat and the relatively lack of precipitation, both in the short term and even in the long term. As far as uh, any major events, we didn't really have a whole lot in terms of any kind of severe weather. Uh, we only had a couple of distinct rainy periods, the first one being July 4th through July 9th. You can see here this is the seven-day estimated rainfall from that period. Uh, you can see most of the region got uh, over an inch of rain with some, uh, some more isolated locations up to 3, 4 plus, uh, mainly in the San Antonio uh, area and points northwest and even the Austin area got a little bit of rain out of that. Um, and then again, August 9th through the 13th, again, here's the five-day estimated rainfall during that time period. Um, you can kind of see uh, the bullseye here across northwestern Uvalde County, where they picked up, uh, in some spots, over 10 inches of rain. And then here, this is a, a comparison here of the Nueces River at the Mile 19 Bridge that's between Camp Wood and Uvalde in northwestern Uvalde County. The top is an image from uh, Google Street View showing you what it normally looks like from that bridge and then down below is a photograph from the morning of August 12th from that same location after about 10 to 12 inches of rain fell in about four hours um, near and slightly upstream of that location. So had a pretty, uh, pretty significant flash flooding event with that. Uh, 27 campers at Chalk Bluff uh, campsite area on the Nueces River uh, were stranded in the water. Fortunately, there were no fatalities and no injuries to speak of, uh, but they had to break out some helicopters and rescue some folks from the high water. So we will go ahead and look ahead now to the fall. Um, just kind of an overall view here. This is the severe weather reports broken down by month. And you can see for the fall months of September, October, and November, uh, still pretty relatively low occurrence of, of severe weather. Um, so severe weather is relatively rare during the fall months. Um, but flash flooding and heavy rain remains a concern. You can see the flash flood reports you know, still a little bit elevated through the, throughout the fall months. And if we look at actually the, uh, the precipitation by month, Austin on top, in the middle here is Del Rio, and at the bottom is San Antonio. Uh, you can see that fall tends to be a fairly uh, wet season for us per climatology, with the month of October especially being one of the wettest months of the year for, uh, for our locations across South Central Texas. So we've actually had quite a bit of rain here recently. I showed you the, um, the drought outlook map there from the end of, of August. Well, once we got into September, the floodgates kind of open, opened up. Uh, it's been extremely wet September so far across the entire region. Um, San Antonio especially will likely set uh, their new September precip record. They're only about an inch off the pace and uh, most likely we'll break that here this weekend with the rain that we're supposed to be getting. So on the right here is the map of uh, total rainfall. 
since September 1st across the region and then the percent of normal. So you can see that we've been 300% and even above in some cases for the percent of uh, normal above for all but a few isolated locations primarily across the eastern counties here of, of uh, Lee and, and Fayette counties. And we have had a good number of flash flooding and river flooding. Good news is, though, is that we've been so dry lately that I think the impacts have been a little bit less of what they would have been otherwise. And most of the river flooding, thankfully, has been, you know, just flooding lowland and rural uh, areas, farmland, ranch land, things like that. So we really haven't had that much of impactful flooding going on. But the problem is that we now have all these saturated soils and swollen creeks and rivers in the area, which is a concern going forward in the near term. Uh, as more heavy rain as possible here in, in the weeks and, and months to follow. So here's a look at the 90 and 180 day rainfall as of September 19th. Uh, on the left here is the 90 day rainfall and the percent of normal rainfall and on the right is the 180 day rainfall. Top right and bottom right is the 180 day percent of normal rainfall. And again, September heavy rainfall has drastically improved both the 90 and the 180 day rainfall and the percent of normal rainfall. Um, you can see here on the on the 90-day especially, uh, basically this area here from San Antonio westward toward the Del Rio area um, has received quite a bit of rain, uh, pushing up to 200 to 300% above normal over the 90-day period. So again, uh, this rainfall you've picked up in the last two to three weeks has been immensely helpful. And with that, you know, I know I've kind of already touched on it, but we'll go through it again. Here's the drought outlook. Um, again, these recent heavy rains has drastically improved our drought conditions. So on the top here, this is the drought monitor that was just released today. And uh, compared to the one I showed you earlier here from August 30th, and you can see just a tremendous improvement in drought conditions. Um, right now, you know, the worst we have is just D1 drought. Uh, and only 18% of the region is in D1 drought. 29% is uh, dry or D0 plus. And the rest of the region currently... Um, no drought issues at all. And we have more forecasted rain over the next seven days, which should only act to continue to improve these drought conditions. And then here is the U.S. Seasonal Drought Outlook released by the Climate Prediction Center. This was actually released today. And you can see that uh, we're not expecting drought to redevelop this fall. Or at least, actually, this is valid through the end of December. So through the end of the calendar year, um, looks like we're not anticipating drought to uh, redevelop. So thankfully, it looks like the drought has, by and large, been busted. So I know this is the, the fall outlook, but uh, with everybody on the call, I think it would probably be a good idea to, to go over what we got going on this weekend uh, with the heavy rain chances. Um, for a large area across the region here, we're expecting on average two to four inches possible with locally heavier amounts up to maybe six to even eight inches uh, this weekend, primarily Friday evening through Saturday morning to Saturday afternoon. Um, and then beyond that, looking ahead to next week, we have a possible cold frontal passage uh, Wednesday into Thursday of next week, which will give us another shot at some locally heavy rainfall. Uh, so again, uh, the, the rainy pattern is expected to continue here, um, at least in the short term. All right, moving on now to the Climate Prediction Center 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day outlooks. Uh, the 6 to 10 outlooks here on the left. Uh, top left is the temperature outlook. Bottom left is the precip. And then on the right side, we have the 18, 8 to 14 day outlooks, temperature on top, and precip on bottom. And you can see um, with all these products, uh, below normal temperatures are anticipated over the next two weeks. And above normal precipitation is anticipated over the next two weeks. So again, continue that theme of below normal temperatures and above normal precipitation. So how about uh, ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation Outlook? Uh, currently, ENSO neutral conditions are present, um, but the alert system status is an El Nino watch. The Climate Prediction Center predicts a 50 to 55% chance for El Nino onset during the fall months. And then they up this to 65 to 70% chance for El Nino onset by the winter time. So you can see here on the right, these are the model predictions of ENSO from August. You can see all the different models here that were used. And uh, the vast majority of them take us into El Nino. Um, not a particularly strong El Nino should stay between 0.5 and 1.5 um, SST anomaly there. So uh, won't be a, not expected to be a strong El Nino, but still an El Nino nonetheless. And what does that mean for us here in South Central Texas? Well, typically um, El Nino in fall and winter 
across our area translates to above normal precipitation. Um, as far as temperatures go, the signal isn't quite as strong, um, so it's hard to kind of make uh, too much uh, of a forecast in the temperatures due to El Nino. But as far as precipitation, we are reasonably confident that it should translate to above normal precip for the fall and winter months. And as such, the Climate Prediction Center outlooks kind of follow along with that. This is the October outlook. Uh, temperatures on the left and precip on the right. You can see uh, no strong signal for October temperatures. They give us even chances across the region. And then they do show odds being tilted toward above normal precipitation for us for the month of October. And then if we continue on through the, out, the fall outlook, uh, this actually extends into one month of the winter time. This is for October, November, December. You can see for temperature here's temperature here, they actually do tilt us toward above normal temperatures for October, November, and December. And then for precip, uh, again, you can see they continue to tilt us toward above normal precip for the months of October, November, and December. So the real thing to take home here is the fact that it, it does seem like we're going to kind of be uh, seeing above normal precip uh, over the next few months. All right, moving on now to the tropical weather outlook. It had been a pretty quiet tropical weather season for the first half of hurricane season. But things have kind of uh, increased here uh, over the past few weeks. Of course, we had Hurricane Florence make landfall in the Carolinas. Um, as of right now, we do have four areas of interest across the Atlantic presently. Uh, however, all of them have fairly low chances of development, uh, except for this one out here, but that one's you know not really in a location where it's going to impact us. So low chances of development for all these right now, and they're all fairly far away from our location. Uh, really, the only ones of interest would be these two down here, um, which, you know, typically if we're going to get a tropical system through here off of something off the coast of Africa, it's going to take this more southerly track across Lesser Antilles and then track up into the Gulf to reach us. So uh, these would be the two to watch, but uh, right now not a whole lot of concern with that. And then the Hurricane Center, they released their update on August 9th um, with the hurricane season outlook. And if you recall, when they released the initial outlook um, back before the start of the season or right at the start of the season back in May. They were predicting pretty good odds for a near normal or even slightly above normal hurricane season. But with their updated forecast now, they've actually tilted it the other way now where they have 60% odds for a below normal season and 30% odds for a near normal. So that puts us at 90% odds for near or below normal. Uh, but again, one thing I want to stress is that it only takes one tropical system to have major impacts all right, so the fire weather outlook, conditions are not expected to be conducive for wildland fires. Uh, again, this, the recent heavy rainfall has saturated soils and saturated fuels. The energy release component, that's these two graphs here on the right. Uh, the top one is from the Hill Country region, the bottom one is from Central Texas region. And you can see that the ERC has plummeted here in the past few weeks uh, due to all that heavy rain we've received. And then the National Interagency Fire Center, predicts near normal or below normal significant wildland fire potential for the rest of fall. So this is their outlook for October 2018. And on bottom here is, the, uh, is November 2018. And you can see again for South Central Texas uh, predicted to be normal or below normal um, for significant wildland fire potential. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. Uh, this is the impacts outlook summary. Uh, heavy rain, flash flooding, and river flooding, these three right here, you can see the slider bars here. Uh, hedging toward above normal impacts due to the antecedent wet conditions and likelihood of wetter than normal conditions persisting. As far as severe weather goes, um, we've hedged it to just slightly below normal. Um, there's really no strong signal. Taking a look at the CFS model, which does a decent job of kind of highlighting chances for severe weather over the next month or two. Um, it doesn't really show anything at all for our region for severe weather. And again, you know, we don't really have that bad of a severe weather season here in the fall anyway, so we've hedged that to, uh, to slightly below normal. Moving on now to tropical weather, uh, we have passed the peak of hurricane season, which occurs around September 10th, so we're actually on the decline now. And the Hurricane Center updated their forecasts, and they now show a 90% likelihood of near or below normal hurricane season for the rest of the season, so I've hedged that to slightly below normal. And lastly, now moving on to fire weather. 
Uh, we are expecting below normal impacts from wildland fires, again due to those antecedent wet conditions and the fact that above normal precipitation is expected to continue throughout the next few months. So to wrap things up again, really our biggest concerns are for these three right here, the heavy rain, the flash flooding, and the river flooding. So that wraps it up. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them on the line uh, here shortly, or you can call our office here at the public line, speak with a meteorologist. You can email me directly if you have any questions. And for all the latest up-to-date weather information, you can visit us at weather.gov slash Austin or slash San Antonio. Thank you very much, and I will take any questions.